All right, so today we are going to look at how we sort or merge two sorted lists. Now, a list is an abstraction. I could have a linked list, I could have an array. So the question on LeetCode is with linked lists, our walkthrough will be with a linked list so I can show you how it's done and how we can like avoid some work at the end. You'll see what I mean in like a little case where we exhaust one list. But, so the question is, Given two sorted lists, this is very similar to my video talking about merging k-sorted lists. This is actually a smaller video in scope because this is the fundamental that I built off in that video. Merging two sorted lists. This is very important for algorithms like merge sort. I have a video on merge sort. For algorithms like merge sort, we need to know how to merge two sorted lists because what we do is we drill down to base cases and those base cases push us back upwards and we have sorted lists as we go back upwards and we need to merge those after doing the split steps. For this problem, two sorted lists. We have a sorted list. How do we do this? Let's look at how we do this. So we're going to do this with a linked list. So the thing is linked list problems are pretty tricky. When I first started learning them, I was horrible at like pointer manipulation and, and moving those pointers around to solve problems. Linked list problems can become very easy with practice and just like knowing the methods that we do to work with these nodes. So what we're going to do for this problem is we're going to put a pointer at the beginning of each of these lists. And we're going to use a dummy head to build this new list. So this is what the setup looks like. All right, so we have pointers on each of our first nodes. We have a dummy head. I really like using dummy head nodes for linked list problems. Why? Because we do not need to worry about having an empty state on the dummy head. When we're building our new list, if I put a pointer cur on this head, which is what we're going to do, actually let me rename things so it's a little more clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my list off of cur. If I didn't have a dummy head, what if cur is null? What if cur has nothing? I can't just say cur.next because what if the actual value of cur is null? A dummy head node gets rid of this problem by when we point to cur, I know it's going to have a value. It's just going to be my dummy head. I keep saying dummy head. This is kind of annoying. So I point list one pointer here, L2 pointer there. We are going to advance those pointers as we eat up the parts of the list and we choose items. So we perform our first comparison. We want the lesser item. The lesser item gets the placement. If they're equal, we can take it from both list one or list two. Negative one versus one. The smaller item is going to be negative one. Negative one gets the placement. So this is what happens. So what just happened? I appended the negative one node to the dummy head. So now this is the first node in our list and it's the last node in our list. And what I did was I moved cur to this node. So cur is always going to be pointing at the tail of the list we are building, the tail of the sorted list we are building. And I advanced L2 and now L2 points here. And now we can continue our comparisons between L1 and L2 and advance. And just stay with me, it becomes very straightforward. The thing about these linked list problems is they're often done in M plus N time or linear time and we use constant space because it's just about rewiring. It's literally like we're electricians. We're just rewiring stuff. So what we do is one versus two. One gets the placement because it is less. So cur.next, we point it to list one and we advance list one. And of course we advance cur to the tail of the sorted list. Cur always points to the tail of the sorted list. And so as you can see, we rewired the node cur was sitting at to now point to this node. And now cur hops itself to what it just pointed itself to because cur needs to stay at the end of the sorted list. So list one is sitting here, list two is sitting here. Those are pointers, they're pointing into the lists. So two versus three, two gets the placement. Let's do our rewiring. We advance list two because we just ate up one of its nodes. We point this node that Kerr is pointing to, to this node and Kerr hops onto the node it just pointed to. And now Kerr needs to stay at the tail of the list always. And that's what happens. And so now, do you notice how as we're going through this, we're slowly building up a sorted list? We start at negative one, we go to one, we go to two. So you see, it's slowly, we're eating up these lists through these comparisons and we're building a sorted list. So now, what we do is compare list one and list two. Again, Kerr is sitting at the tail of the sorted list. This is the sorted list. This is the stuff we still are working on. So now, three and three, well, who wins? So we can take it from either list. Let's just take it from list one. So what we do is list one hops here, 
We rewire the node that Kerr is sitting on to point to the node that just won. And now Kerr is going to point to the tail, which is this node that it's about to point to. And again, Kerr always sits at the tail of the sorted list. Do you see how we're building a sorted list? And now we continue our comparisons. Unprocessed territory. Processed territory. Unprocessed. So now, comparison. Three gets the placement. Three versus five. Three is the winner. So now, Kerr points over here. This arrow gets erased. Kerr points over here. And then Kerr hops onto what it just pointed to. And L2 needs to advance because we just ate one of its nodes. And so now, what we do is we look at L1 and L2. Who is the winner? The winner is L2. L2 gets the placement. We point Kerr to where L2 was, and we move Kerr to the tail of the list we're building. Which is the node that it is about to point to? All right, so now you see we're slowly building a sorted list, and notice, wait, I've exhausted L2. So if I've exhausted L2, what conclusion can I make? I can make the conclusion that everything from L1 and beyond is going to be greater than the last element in this list. It's going to be greater than or equal to the last element in this list. So I could still have a four there and I'd still tack this on. So what we do is, this is a linked list. So all we need to do is, I arrange this pointer, I point to L1. I point to where L1 is pointing because we made the conclusion all these nodes must be greater. And as you can see, they are going to be greater than the last element, which is 4. We can make that 5 a 4, it'd still be greater than or equal to. So what I do is I point this node to L1 and then I am finished because I have exhausted the second list and I know that the first list is all going to be in the right place. And so this is how our algorithm works. And this is our final linked list. So let's write it out. So at the end of our function, all we do is, hey, we have a reference to the dummy head, point the dummy head dot next, return the value of dummy head dot next, return the pointer to this node. When we have the pointer to this node, then bang, we have our whole list. Negative one, one, two, three, three, four, five, 10, 15. And this is how you merge a sorted list. So, this is just how we would do it with an array, although with linked lists, it's kind of easier because I can just do that pointer. I can just adjust that pointer, and then bang, I have the first list in place. First list is finished, and we know it's going to be greater than this last item. That is how you merge two sorted lists. So now let's look at time complexity. We always declare our variables when we're doing big O, so m is the length of the first list, n is the length of the second list. You can swap those. I don't know why I put it in this order. I should have made n list one. Anyway, but m comes before n in alphabetical order, but we use n more often, so I would assume that gets precedence. So the time complexity is going to be big O of m plus n. At worst, we traverse the length of both of those lists. If they're very similar, we're going to have to do a lot of comparisons and then we'll go towards the tail. If they're very different, if I have a list of one, two, and three, and then the other list is all values greater than 10, then I'm going to terminate very quickly and just do the rewiring and then jump out of there because I'm finished. We're going to be using constant space. We're going to be using constant space because all we're doing is a shifting of pointers, jumping around, doing our little rewiring, and then getting out of there. We're not creating a whole new array. We're not creating new nodes. We're not creating an array. We're not creating anything that will scale as our input gets arbitrarily large, which is what Big O is about, what these complexities and asymptotic analysis is about. If you like this video, if this was a clear explanation, hit the like button, subscribe. I know that this video was kind of easy, but the thing is, we'll have our fair share of our leak code hards and leak code mediums. We'll get to those and do those. But I want to set a fundamental basis and teach these because it is key to have these fundamentals for our sorting algorithms and apply to other questions like merge case sorted lists. That's all for this video. And